Son Goku is dead for the third time. I'm Lagenvist. 71, here we go. And right off the bat, it starts off with a story a little ahead, with the death of Goku. Not something particularly new or unprecedented, but it is something out of the ordinary for Dragon Ball Super to start ahead of a story and then go, go back to what leads up to those events. And I must say that the direction in this episode is quite different from pretty much most episodes of Dragon Ball Super. It's very atmospheric, having very long shots, letting you soak in the atmosphere as Goku is doing his meditation. It's not something we see in Dragon Ball Super often, but you know, I do like it. Goku eats his rice one little grain at a time, which is definitely something out of the ordinary and it definitely does not go unnoticed. Chi Chi and Goten ask him what is exactly wrong. Goku doesn't exactly answer, but it does seem that the thing on his mind is that someone is after him. We then go to Beerus HQ, where Vegeta is receiving some training from Whis. Beerus asks Whis, where is Goku? What is he up to? Shouldn't you be training Goku instead since he's going to be our top fighter in the upcoming Universal Tournament. Of course, this irks Vegeta just a little bit that his own training has to be stopped because of Goku. Vegeta has his own suspicions and he suspects that Whis knows what Goku is doing. He thinks, of course, that Goku's up to some grand special training like he always is. The episode from here takes a little bit of a humorous twist as we follow Gohan and Goten trying to figure out what exactly is on Goku's mind. Why is he acting so strange? So they decide to tail him and they go through some wacky antics like Goku going into a women's clothing store, something that I think we usually see Master Roshi in the role of. However, Goku was unable to find whoever he was looking for, and Gohan and Goten are unable to figure out what is on Goku's mind. But it is here, during the halfway point of the episode, that we go to some strange planet on a faraway civilization, and we see Hit. We get a little news report on Frosted's current whereabouts. But the important thing here is that we are introduced to a small blue alien. Now you know he's important because he is at the top of a skyscraper with legions of bodyguards at his side. Is he a mob boss? Is he a business tycoon? Well, maybe it's not even relevant because Hit is after him and we know he'll be soon one thing. Dead. And I really do like the way they portrayed Hit's job in this, because this is the first time we really get to see how Hit actually carries out his assassinations. And we of course see that it's very easy for him, especially since he has a time manipulation technique that will make things very easy for you in your job. But I really do like the way that he just walks through all his bodyguards and security without any resistance or problem. He gets right to his target, he quickly tells him, you know what, you're gonna die, there's nothing you can do about it. That's that. He takes the necklace off from his neck. Maybe that's the thing that his client wanted. We're not really sure. Not many things are explained here. I think this is just to establish that, you know, Hit's an assassin and how he uh, carries out his assassinations. The important thing is that after this, he gets out a little device with a hologram projecting Goku as his next target. And now we know what is on Goku's mind. Obviously, Goku has sensed somehow Hit's incoming presence and is, I guess, eagerly awaiting him since, you know, it'll be a challenge to fight him. Goku does reveal to Gohan and Goten that someone is after him and that someone is after his life. I will like to know how Goku knows that, but, you know, it's Goku. He, he has pretty extraordinary abilities to sense things, so... I guess that's not really the important issue here. And the important thing, however, is that as soon as Hit arrives on Earth or when Goku learns of his whereabouts, he immediately goes in his direction to confront him, of course. He is then followed by Gohan, Goten, and Piccolo because they obviously don't want him to be fighting Hit alone. And of course, Goku's taking this all as just another great challenge, another great fighter that he can test his abilities on. Even though Goku is aware of what Hit's intentions are, which is to kill him, I think he severely underestimated Hit, because even though going up to Super Saiyan Blue to fight him, Hit only really took him out in one fell swoop. And just like that, Goku's dead. And we're right at the beginning of the episode once again. And that's where the episode ends. Uh, is Goku gonna stay dead? Absolutely not. I think it's pretty obvious that he's not gonna stay dead. Um, is he even dead? You know, that's the real question too. He might not even be dead. He might be in like some other kind of state, but regardless, 
that was the episode. I thought it was a nice setup for this mini arc because I'm pretty sure this isn't going to last pretty long. But it was a good episode. I liked the direction. The direction was very different from the other episodes with, you know, very quiet moments. I love how Hit was portrayed to go in and, you know, targeting his assassin. I like the beginning shots of the episode with Goku meditating. Overall, pretty good episode. And if you like these thoughts, guys, please subscribe to the channel because I'll be bringing you more videos like this one. Until next time, guys. I'm Black and Fist, and I'm out of here.